I'm happy to start the sustainability track. I think it's the first sustainability track at the SFSCon. And we have a lot of uh, interesting talks today, and I will start with a more broad overview, so the speakers will go more in-depth. I will start with a broad overview about what we need for a more sustainable digital society. And um, let's start with the software. So I think many of us are aware that when we run software, that we need energy to run the software. But actually, we also need already energy to beforehand, so to produce the software, to write the software. At least before Corona, for example, you are driving to the office, and we turn on the light, we um, have a climatization, we spend a lot of woman hours in coding the project, and of course, a lot of brain power. And uh, so there's a lot of energy invested already, but unfortunately, very often not for a long time. So this is a famous Google cemetery. It shows um, all the projects Google is not developing anymore and has a total death count since 2006. is uh, more than 160, so there's more than 10 a year. And the average lifespan of a Google product seems to be four years and one month. This is not a lot regarding or thinking that how much energy has been invested to produce that software. So it would be a way more sustainable if I could reuse that software, if I could just take one of these projects and develop them further. This is what free software will allow, does allow us. There's a lot of experts here in the room. I don't think I have to explain what is free software. Just to be sure, when I say free software, then I mean software that is licensed under the four freedom, under a license that gives us the four freedoms to use, study, share, and improve the software. So the point I want to make is these four freedoms have a lot of benefits, but they also allow us to reuse software and basically have kind of a circular use of software where we develop software, and even if we stop it, we can reuse it and develop it further and stop it again, and so have like this wheel going of a circular use of software, which is important if you think about how much energy is invested just in producing that software, and uh, yeah, so how much sustainable it is to reuse it. Also, reuse optimizes efficiency over time, seems to be. So here's the famous Linux kernel. It's uh, used in the 500 top supercomputers in the world. It's used on the most servers in the internet. It's also used on old hardware, so it's very dynamic. It seems to be very efficient. So it seems also reuse has a very uh, positive benefit on the efficiency of the software, which is also, again, very important because in the beginning, I said software also needs energy to run, so a more efficient software is also good in that regard. And it's especially important is reuse things like reusing the software and also have efficient software. If we think about what will happen in this decade, we will have, we will see an exponential growth of devices and of software that we need to run these devices and of the energy that we need to run these devices, as in particular in these fields artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, or let's say connected devices, and smart everything, smart cities, smart homes, smart agriculture. In all these fields, we will see exponential growth. And uh, so let's reuse the software so we can save more resources in the production and in the uh, efficiency. So picking, picking up the the campaign from the Free Software Foundation Europe. This is the first uh, point I want to make. Let's start a circular use uh, and reuse of software. I mean, of course, it would be beneficial if like, all software would be free software, but let's be realistic and start with one step after the other. Uh, it's very natural to say public money, whenever public money is invested, it should be public code. And we will see a lot of public infrastructure will be set up in this decade, so this should be with free software and public code. Did you know that free software can save lives? No, but don't know what you are thinking about, but at least it can save lives of hardware. Um, this is very important because the biggest footprint occurs during the production of hardware and not during its lifetime. And if we would use our devices just one year longer, then we could save hundreds of millions of devices from being wasted or produced. 
Like when I was a child, there was this joke about a guy who owns a Porsche, the car, Porsche, and he buys a new one when the ashtray is full. That seems very absurd, but actually that is happening with our devices currently. So we buy a new device when the battery is not working properly anymore or the screen is broken. And uh, even more absurd, we could buy a new device because we don't get update of the software anymore. That is a big problem. That is called software obsolescence. So this is how I would expect a, a, like a natural, sustainable digital society. I buy a device today that comes with the operating system version X. There's a follow-up version, X plus one. I install that on my device and the circle goes on. However, that is not in practice, not the case. Normally I buy this device today with the version X. Then the manufacturer says, okay, uh, has no interest anymore in supporting that uh, device, declares the end of support, and that basically leads to the end of hardware because now as a user I'm faced with the dilemma, either I run my old software and have a security issue, or I just or I have to buy a new phone just in order to run the new software. So this uh, problem is called software obsolescence because the hardware is devalued by software. Fortunately, free software can help us with this. So these examples here are all, as you see, with, uh, in the Android system. This is also because the, it's very obvious in the Android system, the problem, also the solution, but this is also true for other environments. So I buy a new device that comes with version X and there's a free software alternative version of this version X. There's also the free software alternative version of the version X plus one. So in this case, because no manufacturer can tell me now is the end of support, I can just, if I install the free software version, I can go on to the next version and maybe to the next version and I can keep using my device and save a lot of natural resources this way. Also, not only I can install a new upgrade of the initial operating system, it would be even more beneficial if you can replace it with a, another totally different operating system, like when my phone is not working anymore, I don't want to use it anymore, and I can reuse it, for example, in my personal home infrastructure for my automatic water system or something like that. And in order to do that, that's my second point, what we need is we need general purpose devices our phones are as powerful as the first, uh, as the computer who shot the first rocket to the moon. So why wasting them away just because the operating system is not updated anymore? We can just use them for another purpose when we have the right to install alternative software and operating systems. That would, uh, yeah, that would be a big step in towards a more sustainable digital society if we unlock these technical legal restrictions that hinder us today. The, until we are there, so like until we have the solution or like we can use any device with the software that we like to use it with, that until we are there, we have, the, we have another solution for a problem because this is the solution we just had, uh, the problem we just had. So I have a device, there's the end of support and there's the end of hardware. But we can solve that solution if we upcycle the software Meaning, if the manufacturer has an obligation to publish the source code after the end of support under a free software license, then a third party can pick up the code, upcycle the code, like develop it further, and give this way, give the device a second life. Of course, this is not a law of nature that this will happen immediately or something, but it is to expect it that with very popular devices, it will start that there's some company, community, something, someone who, who upcycles the software in this way. And uh, the more we see that happen, the more um, repetition will follow. And this way we enable uh, an aftermarket after the end of life of the software and save a lot of resources again. So this is the third point here, the upcycling of software. With, the, in, with an obligation to publish the source code of a manufacturer under a free license after the end of support to stop linear product waste through software obsolescence, the problem we just had before. 
the last issue we have here, or to, that I pick up today, is the incompatibility of products. So that's uh, another big issue. So we have a problem. I buy a product from one manufacturer and that cannot talk with the product from the other manufacturer, which is um, very artificial because if they, if they would like to speak to each other, they could. It's just artificial because they what and what they want to create island solutions so that one if I once decide for one manufacturer I should keep in that family of products but this um, this ends in the situation where I maybe have two or three products from different manufacturers and then I cannot combine them and then I have to waste two of the three and choose the other one and um, this seems very unsustainable so in the industrial age, there was uh, the solution of standardization, which is uh, very important here in this regard. And it was very important back in that time for um, analog standardization of things. Um, digitally, we can do this uh, a little bit more smart, I would say, with an interoperability. So the obligation to have uh, interoperable products via open standards and uh, open drivers interfaces. This will be especially, re thinking back, with the exponential growth of smart everything, of the Internet of Things, this will be key for not wasting millions and millions of devices just because they're incompatible with the next version of or with the product of the other manufacturer and also avoid this way monopolies of things. Yeah, so this will be basically the interoperability of things. And uh, this is so my fourth point here that I want to make today. The ability to combine and reuse different hardware and software via open standards, drivers, and interfaces. And via this, we are able to transform the Internet of Linear Things into one of the reusable devices. And think again, thinking back again, this is very important because the production of devices is that what has the biggest footprint. So whenever we can reuse a device, we can use it longer, we can combine it with some other device, a lot of natural resources are saved, actually. The last two points I made, like the publication of source code and uh, having open standards and interfaces and drivers, that um, is also very important for the right to repair and to enable third party for repairing devices. We will hear later in this same track more about this. Um, just here as a side note, 